What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to add graphics behind your navigation items in Squarespace 7.0 Brian family templates. So enjoy. What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I'm going to be adding a graphic behind navigation items. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So, well, I guess first I'll show you the inspiration um, behind this. So uh, if I can find the email, here we go. So uh, this was the request, having these sort of graphics behind navigation items. So this is the graphic that she ended up sending. So this is the look that I'm gonna try and replicate. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing that I want to do is find a class to target um, that all of these navigation elements have. Uh, and so it looks like all of them have header nav item. Um, so that is the class that I'm going to be using to target each of these items. So let's go ahead and just pull that class. And then to add the graphic, uh, I'm going to be using an after pseudo element. So pseudo elements allow you to add content to the page using CSS. So this is a good way to add an image to an element uh, is with the after pseudo element. So pseudo elements require a content property even though we're not gonna fill anything in there. Um, then we have to give them a width. We'll just do actually We'll do like 50 pixels and just see how that looks. Height, 50 pixels. Um, we need to give it a position of absolute. And now we can add in the background image. URL, open up some parentheses. Now I've already loaded my image into the manage custom files. So I click between the parentheses because that's where it'll put the URL. Then I find my element and then click on it and it inserts the URL. And I have to finish that off with a semicolon. Okay, so one thing that I'm noticing, so we have it added, but it's just positioning them below each item. So when you're, when you're positioning well, let's just go ahead, let's add a top of zero and a left of zero. Okay, so it, it just went completely crazy. So when you're positioning a pseudo element, absolutely, uh, you have to position absolutely relative to something. So right now, it when you position something absolutely, it will be positioned relative to the nearest parent container that has a position defined on it. So we want to position it relative to each one of these items. Um, but right now it's just positioning them relative to anything that has a position defined. So um, I was going to try and, and go through here and try and figure out like what is the element that has a the nearest parent element that has a position defined. Um, but that'll take a while and I'm just trying to prove a point. So I'm gonna skip that step. But another way I'll prove it is if I just give a position relative to each one of these nav items, you'll see that then the image uh, should jump right onto each one of these items and they do. So, um, it's really important to remember when you're positioning an after pseudo element or before pseudo element, if you're gonna position it absolutely, you have to define a position on the element that you wanna position it relative to. And uh, yeah, so so let's just leave it at that, okay. So right now I have that the after pseudo element positioned um, top zero and left zero. So, it's at the top left of this element, but we want to position it 50% of the way down and 50% of the way over because we need to center it. So that's what I'll do right now, 
and 50%. Okay, so when you're positioning an element, it positions it from the top left-hand corner, as I just mentioned. So you'll notice that the top left-hand corner of our element is perfectly positioned. Um, but we want the center of our element to be perfectly positioned in the middle. So the way that we can do that is with the transform translate property. And we'll open up some parentheses. And then I'll do negative 50% and negative 50%. And I have to separate these by a comma. Okay. And now the center of the image jumps right to the center of the word. Okay, so one thing that I want to do on this background image is give it a background size of contain. And that'll just make sure that the image isn't getting, even if the image is larger than its 50 pixel container, um, it'll shrink down and make sure that it's always contained within that 50 pixel container. So now uh, another thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the background never repeats. So I'll do background repeat no dash repeat. And so that'll make sure that, yeah, again, this pattern never repeats. It should only be one image per container. Um, and then I can do a background position center. Uh, and yeah, I didn't think that would change anything, but that'll just make sure that the image is always centered within its container. Okay, so, okay, another thing that I'm noticing is it looks like our image is kind of over our link so our links will no longer work you can't click on them which obviously is not good so we're gonna have to play with the z index so i'm going to go to z index and let's start at zero uh, and pretty much everything has a default z index of one so if you make an element have a z index of zero then it should put it behind but it looks like it didn't Okay, so negative one makes it disappear. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a Z index of one to those items and we'll give a Z index of zero. Oh, Z index of negative one. Okay, so now we get our navigation back um, and that's because we put the, the nav item has a Z index of one now. So now that we've moved, we applied a Z index of one, it kind of bumps it up above this element, which has a Z index of negative one. So now we get our navigation back. You can also adjust the opacity. So I might give it like an opacity of 0.7 just because that pattern was kind of making it harder to read the text. So now uh, just taking down the opacity seems like it helped a little bit. Okay, so there you go, guys. Uh, if you want to add a graphic to your header, excuse me, header navigation items, this is a good way to do it. I'm going to prefix this code real quick because the transform element, uh, you can see here, it needs a prefix to work on all browsers. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that. And there we go. Now we have the final live CSS to get this effect on her site. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. I will see you in the next one.